What do you want from me? What is this about? Welcome back everyone, this is going to be my full video explaining the new version of Lady Loki on the Loki series. This character who's a combination of a couple different characters. We call her Lady Loki, but she's a little bit different from the comic book version of that, so I'll explain all those easter eggs. There's some really cool easter eggs and big ramifications for Marvel Phase 4 in the multiverse with what she's doing in her plan, so we'll break it all down. If you're new to my channel, I'll be doing videos for all the Marvel Disney Plus series episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get those. We're doing a giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your predictions for what they do with her after the events of the Loki series. Careful for spoilers if you have not seen all the Loki episodes so far up to this point. But at the end of Loki episode 2, our Loki finally comes face to face with the variant who Mobius brought him on initially to take down. The showrunner said that the Blade Runner movie helped inspire some of the series in that Mobius is kind of like the Deckard character, the hard-boiled detective hunting down replicants in these alternate Loki variants. So when this Loki variant unfurls her hood and is revealed as a female Loki, most people naturally assumed it was the show's version of Lady Loki from Marvel Comics. But there was this big twist in the credits. The credits for most of the several different languages that they dubbed the show into still only refer to her as the variant, but the Latin American credits listed her as Sylvie. And if you rewatch the episode with a fine tooth comb and really look for the hard to find Easter eggs, you might have spotted her actual full name appeared in the episode. So our Loki, at least if he was paying attention, saw it on the page already, so he already knows who she is exactly. When Loki is looking at the files right here after Mobius sits him down initially to look at the incident reports on Lady Loki, her full name is listed as Sylvie LaFay daughter, canonizing her as the daughter of LaFay, making her a Loki. But the reason why her name is Sylvie is because instead of LaFay having a son in an alternate timeline that this Sylvie came from, LaFay had a daughter, left her for dead just like our Loki. Then a version of Odin in that reality found her, took her in for the same reason that he took in regular Loki as a way to ensure the peace between the frost giants and Asgard was kept. Also to kind of take pity on this dying baby that was left for dead. Lafay seems like a deadbeat dad in every reality. And then instead of naming her Loki, he just named her Sylvie. But the name Sylvie is a reference to Sylvie Lushton in the comics, the second version of Marvel's Enchantress. Amora is the true Enchantress. They've never actually done her in the movies or the TV shows before. Maybe because DC has their Enchantress that they've done in the movies and the TV shows. I'm not sure if there's some sort of Marvel DC copyright issue that's going on there. Maybe we'll actually see Marvel's true Enchantress appear somewhere in the future. The Sylvie Lushton Enchantress was created by Lady Loki though. She was a normal human girl living in Little Asgard in Broxton, USA, which is kind of like their version of New Asgard at the time. And Lady Loki just created her as a sort of fun mischievous experiment for no better reason than to just cause some trouble on Earth. But this version of Sylvie eventually did join the Young Avengers team and took Amora's identity as the Enchantress. Amora herself got super pissed about it. They had it out. On the Loki series, this Sylvie LaFay daughter uses enchantment. She has blonde hair and she speaks with an American accent. Loki kind of calls her magic a cheap trick, but that's mostly them just trading barbs. Like, both versions of Loki have huge egos, and they're both stalling for time. So they both won't shut up. Loki makes a joke about this later, like, now I understand how Thor felt, why he was always so annoyed with me. But this version of Sylvie on the TV show is not meant to be the Enchantress. She's still a Loki, she's just an amalgam of a bunch of different aspects from different Marvel characters and different versions of Loki. For instance, the costume she's wearing, particularly the broken horns in the Loki armor, fine Asgardian leather, fine Corinthian leather, looks just like Icole's costume from the comics. That was the new version of Loki that came after Lady Loki in the comics. He also had a storyline that crossed over with Kid Loki, who was also a separate version of the character. The Icole version of Loki was more like the next form that the original regular Loki took when he was reincarnated. And the reason why you're seeing him depicted here as both a man and a woman is because he was kind of like a non-binary version of the character, so he would flip back and forth to male and female. So Sylvie here on the TV show is a Lady Loki, because obviously she looks female, but if you want to get technical, she is not THE Lady Loki from the comics because her backstory is very different. The real version of Lady Loki was more like the regular Loki who just stole Sif's body around a major apocalyptic Marvel event called Siege. He did wind up going back to his normal male form before he became the Icole version of the character though. 
But every time the original Loki would go from being regular male Loki to Lady Loki to Eichel was during major apocalypse events. So Sylvie LaFay daughter Loki on the TV show's actions in going through apocalypse events to hide is a reference to that. The reason why they're calling her Sylvie LaFay daughter instead of just calling her Loki or calling her Lady Loki is I think to make her feel as different as possible from our Loki, make her feel like a distinct character. She even tells him, don't call me that when he tries to call her Loki because she doesn't want to identify herself as a Loki even though she was born as a Loki, so to speak. The writers, the producers want her to feel very different. They'll also be selling a lot of merch for all these alternate Lokis, so they want her to feel like a very different toy, like not just our Loki in a woman's body. That's why they had that big Mobius speech earlier in the episode saying that Loki variants from alternate timelines could look very different and have very different powers to set up the twist of how Sylvie could still be a Loki but look nothing like our Tom Hiddleston Loki or have a British accent even. The funny thing about that though is that Sophia DiMartino does actually have a British accent in real life. It's just that she's playing the character with an American accent. So just to be clear, she's not the Enchantress, she is still a Loki because she is LaFay's daughter. It's just that when Odin adopted her, instead of naming her Loki, he named her Sylvie. And the reason why she set all these time reset bombs off blowing apart the sacred timeline is part of her grand plan is because it's all part of her larger plot to destroy the TVA and the timekeepers and prevent them from erasing alternate timelines that they deem to be non-sacred because she came from a timeline that they erased. They're heavily implying that she's basically the remnant of this dead reality that they got rid of because they thought it was bad. Mobius and the other TVA agents had all those jokes in the previous episodes about her being the quote unquote superior Loki, way more dangerous than our Loki, just trying to offend our main Loki as much as possible and get him to work that much harder to capture her and prove himself the superior Loki because his ego is so big. All Loki's egos are so big. They kind of joke about that when Loki and Sylvie are trading barbs back and forth through the episode. Please, if anyone's anyone, you're another me. If you watched the Invincible TV show recently, it's a great animated TV series. They had a joke about that too, where you have a couple duplicates arguing about who's the duplicate and who's the original. But the idea on the TV show is that the timekeepers on the series are kind of bad now, sinister. Maybe the TVA itself started off with noble intent. But Mobius and Loki had that long conversation earlier in the episode about how all good things eventually get ruined. They were talking about jet skis in the 90s, but the conversation was meant to be a metaphor for the TVA itself, a Dark Knight type of speech. You die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And that's kind of what's happened to the TVA here. The timekeepers themselves are immortal, so unless you find a way to kill them, they'll never die, at least in the comics. I know we're all expecting some big twist with the timekeepers too, like do they even exist? Are there any timekeepers? Or is that a lie too? There's definitely some big lies being spun inside the TVA. So you had this idea that even though Sylvie LaFay daughter might have gone on to become one of the greatest Lokis in existence, potentially, when her timeline was created through a Nexus event, the TVA determined that it was a mistake and it wasn't part of their grand plan for the sacred timeline. So they went in to erase her reality, but she escaped and then started on her quest to take down the timekeepers and the TVA itself. Blow apart the sacred timeline so that the timekeepers couldn't selectively choose who had the right to exist. That's why she kind of laughs when our Loki tries to offer her the team up when he explains his plan to replace the timekeepers like join me I'm looking for a lieutenant I'm going to replace them. She says she doesn't want to replace them because that would just be more of the same handing the fate of trillions to a single person and she wants the whole paradigm torn down like no one should get to decide who lives and who dies. It's like the Thanos argument like nobody should have the right to choose for the entire universe everyone in existence who gets to live and who dies. And as you see our Loki sitting down for a chat with her in this new apocalypse event in the future episodes, the showrunner said that just like in the Blade Runner movie, our Loki will start to learn more about himself as he learns about the lives of Sylvie and these other Loki variants that they encounter. There are a bunch more other Lokis that we'll meet too, like President Loki, we haven't met him yet, and then there's possibly a version of Kid Loki that's supposed to show up on the series. And that'll help our Loki become a more compassionate person who's more thoughtful about his actions, less selfish, and it's just part of his redemption arc becoming a hero. That's also what Sylvie means when she tells Loki, this isn't about you. She's not just trying to take down the TVA and destroy the sacred timeline for herself, for her own selfish desire for revenge. She's doing it for all the other people potentially that will be killed in future alternate timelines that would be created through potential nexus events that the TVA would then move in to destroy. Like it's not about you, it's about everybody. 
So through the rest of the episodes, Loki will slowly start becoming less egocentric about this. But at this moment, at the end of episode two, when he's chasing after her Sylvie LaFay daughter into the portal, Tom Hiddleston just said that it's his curiosity as a Loki getting the better of him. Like right now in this moment, he doesn't care about capturing her so much. He just wants to learn more about her and what her plan is. So the whole idea here is that Sylvie LaFay daughter is not the villain that Mobius and the rest of the TVA has made her out to be. She's actually trying to help everybody that the timekeepers would potentially or theoretically get rid of should they deem them non-sacred. But at least at this point in the story, our Loki hasn't figured that out yet. And that's going to make itself clear probably over the next couple of episodes. They're making the reveals pretty quickly. But I think that's because Tom Hiddleston said that they take a dramatic left turn in the story during episodes four and five. There are six episodes total. So this whole Lady Loki, Sylvie LaFay daughter reveal is just the tip of the iceberg. Obviously, they have the big reveal of what's really going on inside the TVA, what's really going on with the Timekeepers, and then what happens with the future of the Marvel multiverse in the MCU. So for a lot of you asking, if Sylvie actually created the Marvel multiverse when she blew apart the sacred timeline here, because now there are many other alternate branch timelines that function like fully alternate realities. The multiverse did exist before the events of the Loki series, as the Ancient One tells Doctor Strange in that first Doctor Strange movie, but as I mentioned in my previous video, the way that they describe the multiverse in each movie is just dependent upon what the director wants to do with the story, what the writers want to do with it. So in the first Doctor Strange movie, when they're talking about the multiverse, they're referencing all the different dimensions of the multiverse, which is a little bit different from the traditional multiverse you think of in the comics. The Marvel What If TV series is a good example of that. It's a big multiverse series. They're going to be assembling a multiverse version of the Avengers team with a bunch of alternate versions of characters from different realities. All those episodes are going to start in August. I'll be doing full episode videos for that. But what Sylvie was doing here wasn't so much to set up that series as it is to sort of lead into the events of Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness. Like, post all your Doctor Strange memes, him watching the end of episode 2, like, what the hell is going on over there? This whole idea that the Loki series and what they just did blowing apart the sacred timeline, creating all this madness, so to speak, as they sort of set up in that big explainer in episode 1, is really where the chaos in the multiverse, the madness, comes from, even though what Scarlet Witch is doing is also a big part of that. It's just that after watching the Loki episodes, it seems like it's going to have a much more legit effect on Doctor Strange 2's plot than WandaVision was. Kevin Feige also revealed that the Loki series would have ripple effects affecting all the future Marvel movies as well, so I think that sort of goes hand in hand with the events of Spider-Man 3 No Way Home, with all the Spider-Verse elements that we've been talking about. And as we go along and we see more Easter eggs and foreshadowing for other future Marvel movies, I'll point those out as well. I will do a new video on all the Kang the Conqueror Easter eggs sometime soon too. We'll just continue to see those in all the episodes. So there's going to be a lot of big stuff. Like you rewatch the episodes a couple of times, you'll always find more Easter eggs. But I believe the idea is that after the Loki series, they will still keep this alternate Sylvie LaFay daughter Loki around in the multiverse. She will still continue to exist. They're not going to kill her off at the end of the series. So she's kind of like an Agatha Harkness type of character. Little bad, little good, but just really interesting with what they could do with her in the future. So let me know, what do you want them to do with the Sylvie LaFay daughter character in future Marvel projects if they want to bring her back? There will be a Loki season two, so I assume she would at least come back for that. What'll happen though is I have a couple other videos that I'm working on. There's supposed to be some big trailers in the Black Widow movie is coming out really soon too. So I will do some more Black Widow videos when I have a chance to see the film. I'll name a new giveaway winner when I post my next big Marvel video. Everyone click here for my Loki Episode 3 trailer video and click here for my full Loki Episode 2 video in Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight.